guys, we're back. Um, we're going to do a round of injector control testing next. The customer's complaint on this car was that uh, when he pulls the spark plugs out, one of them looks brand new, like he had, he had just put them in about a week or two prior, and that there's no color on that plug at all. He suspects there's a problem with the injector on cylinder number three, and I suspect he's right. So the test we're going to do next is I'm going to test the amperage of all eight injectors. And the way that we're going to do that is down here, uh, back at the 10 pin connectors, this red wire on the left side, the black connector, is our injector feed wire. This wire, which is conveniently located right on the top of the harness pack, this wire feeds power 12 volts to all eight of the injectors. I'm going to use this guy right here, which he is a low amp clamp, a 60 amp amp clamp designed, uh, set to the 20 amp mode, designed to read the amperage of all the power going through this injector wire. Now, there's a couple of other circuits on here. The idle air control motor and one of the emission solenoids is also on the same circuit. So we're not gonna maybe see perfectly pure injector waveforms, but what we are gonna see is a clear sign of eight injectors firing. And if there's not eight firing, we're gonna know that that's our problem. So uh, in order to figure out which one of the eight may or may not be a problem, I need to synchronize those eight against one to be able to figure that out. So what I've done is over here, I've tapped into the number one injector control wire so that this is looking at the voltage to injector number one, and this is looking at the amperage of all eight injectors. By knowing which one is number one, we're gonna be able to synchronize the rest and just go in the firing order to figure out which one is acting up. Our suspect is number three, we'll see if we're right. Okay. Scope going. It's already running. It's ready to go. I've I went ahead and set up the the scope already so that I'm looking at the amperage and the voltage of these injectors. The scope's ready to go. So let's crank it up. Okay, jackpot, already we know what our problem is. This is clearly missing one of the eight injections. And let me stop that and we'll take a quick look. Okay, every time you see this red line right here, that is an injector, injector number one firing and the very next one in the firing order is missing. So it goes like this, one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight, and repeat with number one again. Well, the second one is number three. That is the, sus the suspect injector that the customer said he didn't think worked. And when we zoom in on that area, let's look at just eight of these. You can see that uh, this other little humps here, that's noise and some of the other things on the same circuit. It's these big humps we're looking at. This is an injector amperage waveform. And if we zoom in even further, you can see that the injector is being turned on, held open, and then shut off. And when it shuts off, there's an inductive spike, and then it does it again. So this is uh, the amperage that's building as the injector is being turned on. And here, when the injector is turned off, the amperage collapses back to zero. And this is our number two spot. There should be a pulse right here, and there is not. So that pattern also repeats. Here we're looking at uh, there's eight injectors firing. There's another eight, and there's another eight. And every time, we're missing that same injector. So we have found our problem. We are not turning the injector on, or more specifically, at this point, all we can say is that we are not seeing any amperage going to that injector. We don't yet know why, but it's going to be that either the computer driver is dead and it's not able to turn that injector on, or there's a wiring problem to that injector on that particular cylinder, or possibly that there's an open in the winding on the injector and that that injector is just junk. Uh, our next step will be to try to get a voltage test on that particular injector to see if we have control over the injector or not if we find that we have a, a pattern like this where we have control 
but we don't have amperage, the computer's fine, the wiring's fine, and the injector's junk. And we can do some more testing with uh, resistance tests and stuff like that to confirm it. But for now, we, we can only say that injector 3 is our problem. We are not controlling injector 3 or injector 3 is being controlled and it's not firing. Uh, our next step will be to figure out which one of those that is. So uh, we have to find a way to get on to the voltage test of injector number 3. And that's not so easy because if you come over here and take a look, Here is injector number one, up here by the distributor, and here's injector number two, and under here is injector number three, and there's no way to get to that because there's too much junk in the way. So we either have to pull the intake off to get to the injector just to test it, or we have to go to the computer, pull the computer out of the car and hook a breakout box to the other end of the wiring harness to try to tap into that wire or we have to find a way to access that wire. Clearly we're not gonna access it at the injector, so we're gonna have to be a little bit more clever. And uh, that's our next test. So that's it for now. Um, we're gonna think about this a little bit and figure out the best way to get a voltage test on that injector, but we're underway. We now know this is definitely why the car has a what feels like a single cylinder misfire. Uh, injector number three is definitely not firing, and we just need to figure out why.